Welcome back to Past Gas. This week we're talking Saab Part Two, and Justin's here. I'm and here. James is here. James too. is back. Yeah, he's alive. <laughs> what happens when GM buys a Swedish car company? Well, you get some weird crap, like a Subaru for some reason, yeah. and an SUV that looks like a van but is has an LS engine in it. Yeah. But it's really cool. Uh, pretty good cars that ended a company. Here yeah. we go. Saab Part Two. Also jets. Oh yeah, jets. lots of jets. Yeah. <laughs> If there's one thing to learn from watching rally racing, whether it be the World Rally Championship or old Group B footage, it's that a small car with all-wheel drive is a match made in snow-covered road heaven. Yeah. Throwing in a turbocharged engine in a proper wagon body style, and it's hard to deny both the fun and cool factor, despite its affinity for front-wheel drive cars, especially in its legendary 9.9 and 900 badges. Swedish automaker Saab still managed to sell one of its properly cool cars as a wagon with all-wheel drive, the 92X Aero. But here's the thing. It wasn't a true Saab, but a mashup of GM DNA mixed with Subaru? What? And it was entirely built by Subaru, too? Yep. But let's take a step back and try to get an idea of where it all started, guys. When did Saab start slipping away? What did platform sharing and badge engineering mean for Saab's legacy and survival? And will we ever see Saab again? Well, we'll find out today on Pass Gas. It's the final part in our two-part series on Saab. Pass Gas Podcast. It's about cars. It's not about ports. What an appropriate episode to have our guest today, yeah. Justin, our resident Subaru freak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Subaru freak. God. Yeah. Justin loves You're Subarus. a Subaru freak. You got the freakiest Subaru car I, I think I've ever seen in I my do. life. Which is funny because Saab is one of those kind of quirky uh, yeah you're well companies. yeah you're a Subaru guy, but not just a Subaru mm-hmm. guy, a weird car yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. You like, like weird over. cars. He's our resident. We thought you liked weird stuff. No, nah, I just like old stuff. You just like old stuff. Yeah. So you're our resident old stuff yeah. guy. Justin, resident weird, weird stuff guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you, What's your fleet look like, Justin? Yeah. Uh, you have a new so, uh, update us. So, yeah. So I have I have my Tundra. You know, yeah, that's my daily. Uh, uh, if you thought that was normal, don't worry. Uh, that's <laughs> where it ends. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is exactly where it ends. I don't think. It yeah, has I, a tray. Uh, I have. That's yeah, weird. Yeah. Very, oh, yeah. He even made Australian, his regular car weird. Very yeah. Australian inspired. I love um, the tray. It looks really good. It's really dope. Really usable. It's yeah. Awesome. Get to the weird. All right, cool. So <laughs> here's the fun stuff. I have three Subaru SVXs. Okay. For our <laughs> They're, uh, family North- at home who doesn't know what weird car, what is a Subaru SVX? Subaru SVX is uh, a Subi Coupe. Subaru Coupe from the 90s with half windows like a DeLorean. It's so sick. I love them. Designed by Giorgetto. Giorgetto. Yeah, really, really quirky car. Really All wheel drive, flat six, 3.3 liter. Sounds like a Porsche if you do the exhaust. Ooh, all came in automatic. In <laughs> they all came in automatic, which made Thanks. them fail miserably. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't know how to market it. It's kind of a strange car in retrospect, especially well, at is. that time when they're going up against your 180 SXs. Well, everyone your, was releasing yeah. luxury brands. Yeah. So yeah. Subaru was like, let's not release a new brand. Let's just try and release yeah. a luxury car. Yeah. It did not work out for them. So this is like not really competing with like a 180 SX because it was like super luxury. More 3000 GT. 3000 GT. 3000 GT. Okay. Yeah. But it uh, never got a turbo. Lexus SC 400. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Bingo. What, what else it? you got there, Justin? So I eventually went down the rabbit hole of getting the predecessor of the SVX. Oh, that that one wasn't weird enough. Let's go older. That's <laughs> yeah. what Justin said. Let's go older. 80s, baby. So I uh, got the one of the pop-up lights. I got the Subaru XT6. Oh, yeah. Which is what led Subaru down. This is the car that inspired Giorgetto to design the SVX the way it is. He got one of these and changed it up. But flat six, all-wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, not turbo like the Saabs, no. but um, same kind of idea. And one of the weirdest steering wheels I've ever seen in my it life. It is an L-shaped yeah. steering wheel, yeah, yes. very weird. You just bought something recently, though. That's right. very strange. So uh, my love for wedge cars kept growing. Yeah. And uh, I came across an Isuzu Impulse on eBay. That was garage kept since 1992 and only has 73,000 miles on it. Wow. Where'd you find that? Here. Isn't it? In wow. Redlands. No way. 
Yeah. That was Justin's latest addition to the the parking lot. Yeah. I like it. It's cool. Oh, it's yeah, it's dope. cool. It yeah. looks like a Volkswagen cool. Scirocco, but it's rear wheel drive. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's yeah, very like 80, 86. Mm -hmm. it, uh, that's kind of the goal. It's the broke man's 86, yeah. <laughs> if you can find one. Cool. All right. So that's Justin. <laughs> that's Justin Freeman. Welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Nolan Sykes. Joined, as always, by my co-host, James Pumphrey. Give He's me back. back, my son. <laughs> He's back. Nolan's dad was and in town pissed. recently. Yeah. James wants I'm Nolan back. Pissed. <laughs> I'm Omicron free and ready to boogie. <laughs> and they were finishing. Joe's in Paris. Joe, yeah, he went to Paris with went his fiance. Paris. He's like, I got to see what all this bread is about. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for them. But yeah, he'll be back next week. This is our finale for Saab. Interesting car company so far. Why don't you catch us up? There was a car that had a two-stroke engine. Got it. And it was front-wheel drive. Okay. Sick. I'm pretty sure that's the one where, like, the problem was the wheels would get, like, jammed up with snow. Oh, shit. All the founders of the company. Uh-huh. They might have worked for the Nazis a little oh, bit. Oh, come man. on. Yeah. Darn yeah. it. Well, luckily, it was only a might have. Might have. Well, they did build like some- a lot uh, of car companies. What is it? The the Junkers U86, uh -huh. uh, which was a German Nazi ah, bomber plane. Okay. They built that on license. So Ooh. I think they might have built that. It's all right. Japan's not really in the exactly. clean Look, yeah. Yeah. Look uh, we, uh, we love listen, Porsche. Listen, listen. If you make- Cars, you've probably committed horrible war crimes. It's <laughs> likely on both sides. Yeah. So you probably that's made not cars great. because you couldn't make war crimes anymore. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, yeah, hey, we got we made all this money doing those war crimes. They did that, and then where did we leave off? Uh, in the eighties, I think. Oh yeah, okay. they had the Saab nine hundred. That oh, was like car. a cool car. The Saab nine nine was a cool car. My stepmom had yeah. a nine hundred convertible. Whoa. Ooh, mm -hmm. nice. Red. Yeah. Ooh, oh, turbo. we talked about architects and dentists and stuff. Yeah, last I'm week. sure you did. Yeah. Architects <laughs> love sobs. Yeah. Who else loves sobs? The character Jerry Seinfeld. That's right. We talked about that actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we talked about Putty, and we deliberated whether the episode with the sob and the mechanic was the one where Putty stole Jerry's move. We determined that was not the case. That was not the same episode. I get him crossed up. Are you cool. caught up? Do you yeah. feel ready I to I mean, I feel this? great. I feel like I was here last week. That's right. about as more than I now usually we're remember. The, 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 it's probably because uh, you did the up stuff. to speed on Saab. I did do the up to speed mm -hmm. on Saab years ago that yeah. I remember. Perfectly. Because you yeah. did it off the dome. I did it off the dome. I do them all off the dome. I just yeah. They say, hey, I go, we, sh we start fresh. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's why they call you the Encyclopedia of Cars. They call me the Encyclopedia yeah. of Cars. Encyclopedia. That sounds like a <laughs> crummy new metal album, like a third Encyclo Encyclopedia <laughs> from Static X. Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. Should we talk about Sob some more? Yeah. All right. Before we talk about cars, though, guys, we need to talk about Sob's most famous ad campaign, Born from Jets. And that means talking about Jets. Hell yeah, dude. Okay. Heck yeah. So last week we learned about the plane Saab made during World War II that may or may not have been for the Nazis. But it wasn't until the mid-1950s that they came out with their first jet. The planes Saab is perhaps best known for are the Lansen, the Draken, the Viggen, and the Greipen. Nice. It's cool they came out with jets after the war. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. The Lansen was first introduced in 1956. It was the Swedish Air Force's first twin-seat jet aircraft and was the first to be equipped with an integrated search radar. Nice. That's pretty cool. Sick. There were three primary variants of the Lansen. Uh, there was an attack plane, a fighter, and reconnaissance plane. Power was provided by a single engine called the Svenska Flygemotor RM5A2 <laughs> or uh, a turbojet variant. Lansen had a lengthy operate, uh, operational life uh, and was retired in 1997. Wow. So pretty oh. long life there. Oh, that's then, really long. Yeah. Then Sarah's there was Princess the Di. Oh. Oh, follow the money. He went there. Yeah, I did. He went there, folks. <laughs> Sorry. The Draken took its first flight in I 1955. Don't pull punches. No. Uh, the Draken took its first flight in 1955, uh, introduced a frontline service in 1960. But guys, the Saab 35 Draken is known for its many firsts in aviation. It was the first Western European built combat aircraft with supersonic capability. Hell yeah. Which is sick. It was also the first Western European aircraft to exceed Mach 2 in level flight. Hell yeah. Nice. Very cool. Uh, let's see. 
It was the first combat aircraft designed with double delta wings. Take a look at this thing. It's a triangle. It is a triangle. It's a flying triangle. It's sick as hell. Like I love it's cars. So like if I were gonna commute in a jet, yeah, this would be a in my suite. Sweet. Oh, Whatever. dude. It was also the first aircraft, first known combat aircraft capable of performing a Cobra maneuver, oh, which is when dude. the plane's going like this and, and then like vertical. pulls up and stalls Hell a little yeah, bit yeah. to slow down. That's I think I sick. built one of these like a model. I think you did. I think you did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, think I don't so. think you did. I think I did. The Draken we function voted. proof. Yeah. <laughs> we voted. Yeah, Draken functioned as a fighter aircraft during the Cold War, but it was never actually used in battle. The Swedish Air Force opted to retire the model in 1999. RIP. Then there was the Viggen, which is a single-seat, single-engine, multi-role combat aircraft that first took flight in 1967 and officially introduced in 71. This was the first uh, to carry an airborne digital central computer with integrated circuits for avionics, meaning computers to fly the plane. Oh, wait, I built a Viggen. A Vigan, yeah, yeah, the Vigan's the sick. two wings. Oh, I do love yes, the two sets recognize. of wings. This section's really for me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're all enjoying yeah. it. There's okay. nothing. The only thing cooler than cars is jets. Jets yes. are sick. And Quite if, literally, yeah. If one thousand percent. You either start with jets, trucks, or planes. Yeah, yeah. You know, Dude, big told, rigs. Yeah, I've told you guys the story before. I, I went to the tell it again. I went to the NASCAR championship a few years ago when Joey Logano won. Was that at Miami Homestead? Yeah, it was yeah. in Miami, and Joey Logano had just won the entire season of. NASCAR mm -hmm. and he like won that race too so like it was like a total win big big day for this guy and sounds he's like, like F1 yeah he's on the podium and he's like getting his trophy for the mm -hmm. whole season and the two pilots who did the flyover these fighter jet pilots one of them <laughs> they had had a couple beers probably and one of them leans into the other one and he goes that guy didn't fly a fighter jet today <laughs> 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 and, and me and Jesse were like He's right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's the coolest thing yeah, ever. It's awesome. Jets George Bush sick. did. Yeah. If we could, if any of us <laughs> could not drive cars anymore and fly jets, we 100% would. Right. When I, that was one of the reasons I was inspired to join the military. It was like, I could be a fighter jet pilot. Like, why not? Yeah. But then, then you realize, like, yeah. they almost cyborg you together, make sure you're the perfect human in order to do it. So if your vision's... So I probably would have done it, huh? If your vision's not good enough, then mm -hmm. you're Yeah, my in. vision's not good enough. Mm. I had to give up on that dream. Yeah, I could tell by your glasses. Yeah. They check yeah, it's kind of... It's not very inconspicuous. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, so those avionics uh, did a bunch of automating and taking over tasks that previously the pilot had to do, made it easier yeah. to fly. Easier for and me. Yeah, easier for you. More time. Raises the ceiling for the More plane. time to get them bogeys. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. more time to concentrate on the bogeys. Yeah, definitely. Which is good. And uh, the missions. And the missions. Yep. It was, uh, the Viggen was it's retired kind of in 2007. we like to think about when we're up there. Yeah. You're yep. just having fun. Yeah. Finally, there was the Gripen, which was a light, single-engine, supersonic, multi-role fighter aircraft, first flown in 1988. Introduced to service in 1996 and is still in use today. It was originally designed to replace both the Draken and the Viggen and crafted to be a smaller and affordable Mach 2 aircraft with a good short field performance in the event of invasion. However, the advanced multi-role fighter isn't without its naysayers. After the Viggen was criticized for taking up too much of Sweden's military budget, the Gripen just barely received government approval to be constructed at all. There's been continuous criticism about the Gripen since, uh, there's crashes in both 89 and 93 that didn't help. And in 2008, Saab announced reduced earnings, partly due to increased marketing costs for the much maligned aircraft. How much marketing? Yeah, why are you marketing? That's the crazy. They're going to fly it. I met, yeah. a, I met a pilot uh, when I was serving, mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, I've got a clean flight track record. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I would hope so. Yeah, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I do. What do you mean? You can crash and keep flying? I think like, you can. I think John McCain back in like the 60s and 70s crashed like three times. Yeah. Wow. Saab will sell these to like, not the US, but you know, smaller countries in Europe and maybe around the world. Like I said, an affordable option, you know, not a lot of countries can afford stuff like the F-35 or F-22. We don't, we don't sell the F-22 actually. We do sell the F-35 though, but it's a less capable version of the one that we have. Of course. Got to keep people on their toes. Okay. So, all that to say, it's the same company. They build jets, and they also build cars, so they are born from jets. You know what I'm saying? So, jets is what inspired my cars. They're all very heavily 80s jet inspired. They, the SVX especially looks like a jet, for sure. Well, all of them do. The XT is the one out there. 
Oh yeah, you can definitely see it. They like black out the pillars, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that makes it look more like a bubble cockpit. Everyone was going for that in the yeah. 80s and 90s. This episode is brought to you by Chime. Spring is in full bloom. Are your finances blooming too? With the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa credit card, it's easy to start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments with no annual fees or interest. And if your credit scores grow, so could your opportunities for lower rates on loans, like for a car or a home. This could help you out. Chime's Credit Builder Visa credit card has no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply. You can use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted, and you build credit using your own money. You can also get paid up to two days earlier with direct deposit. That's right. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. With Chime Secure Credit Card, you can start improving your credit scores right away. Get started today at Chime.com slash gas. That's Chime.com slash gas. Chime feels like progress. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA, members of FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosures for details. Big thanks to Electric E-Bikes for sponsoring this episode of Pass Gas. This spring, get out, enjoy the weather, touch grass, and capture the magic of riding a bike with Electric E-Bike. With an amazing variety of models built for riders of all abilities, it's never been easier to fall in love with riding again. Plus, every Electric E-Bike ships free and only requires quick, toolless assembly. I assembled mine in no time in my living room as my fiancé ogled. Electric e-bikes have up to 150 miles on one charge with Electric's unbeatable long-range options. And they finance for as low as $49 per month. Plus savings on gas, parking, and maintenance, you're going to be saving a pretty penny. Plus they have durable features and accessories for added safety, convenience, and control. I can tell you firsthand, it's super durable. Go full throttle in the spring with Electric e-bikes, the number one selling e-bike in the nation. Get your adventure started at electricebikes.com and please mention that Past Gas by Donut Media sent you in the post checkout survey. That's L E C T R I C E bikes.com. 1985 saw the introduction of one of Saab's heaviest hitters, the 9000. Ooh. However, its creation differed from what the brand did before that point. This thing's sick. Its chassis was co-developed with Italy's Fiat Group and sold as the Alfa Romeo 164, mm. Fiat Chroma, mm. and Lancia Thema. Mm. Models we never got here in the U.S. Uh -huh. Enthusiasts refer to it as the Type 4 project. In short, the idea behind this joint venture was to save development money for entry into the premium luxury market. Hmm. For those of us in the U.S. who remember Saab being a household name in European automobiles, it seemed like it always was a premium brand. That's mainly due to how it was marketed. The 99900 and their predecessors were all considered mid-tier transportation for the masses. The 9000 was kind of like a Toyota Avalon or Volkswagen Arteon. Hmm. Something that gave premium luxury brands a run for their Mune. I think I understand. Bjorn Envall, of course, <laughs> head of Saab Design for many years and co-designer of the 9000, summed up its requirements as such. I must to feel at home with the car. At one with it, mm -hmm. okay. not necessarily with every single detail, but with the overall design. I want the car to feel comfortable and easy rather than big to drive. Naturally. And although it should obviously provide a sense of power and driving pleasure, the interior should be extremely spacious. Hmm. Co-design. <laughs> I'm crazy we got that audio. Yeah. Yeah. How lucky is that? We're just great researchers. Yeah. <laughs> it's not luck. It's hard work. Co-designed by legendary Italian designer Giorgetto Giugiario. Oh, it's a Giugiario joint. A Giugiario joint. We love Giugiario. Giugiario's having a resurgence. Yeah. You can see Giugiario influence all over. Yeah, everywhere, especially Hyundai or Kia or whatever. Well, he was the designer of the century. Mm-hmm. The brand's first attempt at the executive class was beautifully executed. Oh. It may have shared a platform with three other brands, but it retained a quintessential sobness. 
As Jajari himself said of its design, a sub Alantia in the Fiat <laughs> came to me because working with some bodywork elements in three different styling centers, they were afraid that the solutions could be a very similar to one another. In Italian design, we are used to working for different brands, maintaining their peculiarity. Hmm. Until they give him open reins and he designs the exact same thing. Yeah, he does. <laughs> you know, write what you know. Yeah. You know? That's true. Well, what he knew was wedges. He mm. knew wedges. Mm. He knew basic shapes. <laughs> he knew, <laughs> he knew four, basic four shapes. eyes. Yeah, four <laughs> eyes. Super flat hood at whatever angle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and lots of brackets inside the taillight. Yeah. I love that. Perfect. Lots of... Just to take a square and stretch it in various ways. <laughs> While the 9,000 resembled a stretched out 900, it was a good thing. I mean, literally 9,000 does resemble a stretched out 900. Dude, maybe he saw that and was like, yo, yo. what if I had to figure it if a zero to the <laughs> It fit quite nicely with the brand's design language. In fact, while the first iteration resembled a sedan, the rear trunk still lifted up with the rear glass. So it technically was a hatchback, very ahead of its time. All sedans are like that now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Though the CD variant was released in 1988, which was an actual sedan. Dude, I got to say, the 9000 is really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that thing's cool. Looks, yeah. Looks great. I don't know if I'd ever own a Saab, but I like that one. I would. I don't think I'm I don't think I'm right for it. <laughs> My brother just bought a Saab, but it's not like a real Saab. No, we'll get to his Saab probably later. Yeah. It was also front-wheel drive like the 900, oh. so nothing ran through the middle to inhibit space. That kills it. Yeah. Mm. And it was regarded as having excellent expandable cargo room. Mm. Besides that, it sported the same 2-liter engine, either turbocharged or not, which later grew to a 2.3 liters and had a 4-speed automatic transmission. Mm. After GM acquired ownership of Saab, more on that a bit later... A 3-liter, 210-horsepower V6 was available as well. Hmm. But here's the thing about the 9000 as a joint development. It was a headache for Saab. I bet. The brand was so used to doing things in its own unique way and maintaining such high safety standards that working with Fiat, Alfa, Lancia proved difficult. Where Lancia found crash test results perfect, Saab found them quite lacking. The Saab ended up being produced of much thicker steel, having a completely different rear axle and thus being quite a bit more expensive to produce than planned. In the end, only seven body components <laughs> of the 9000 were shared with the Italian's creations, That's including the, the door all four doors. <laughs> That's hilarious. Jeez. Yeah, so four doors and then three other things. That's really funny. Probably like a dash trim. Yeah, well, it's body panels. Body, so exterior? Yeah. Mm. Maybe roof? <laughs> Maybe. That's hilarious. However, there was a healthy upside to the 9000 shared chassis development. Mud flap. Automation. (laughs) Oh. During Saab's time with the Fiat Group, it took a page from the Italian conglomerate's advanced use of automation at the time to streamline production. Therefore, the 9000's assembly was far more automated than any Saab model before. Okay. The 9000 lasted until 1998. But before its end, things were starting to look a bit different in the company's production lines. Do you guys think there's like a special category of automakers that are, I wouldn't say inaccessible, but like should not be taken on by a casual fan of said automaker? Like I'm thinking like Saab is in there, I think. Oh, like they shouldn't buy one? Like, yeah. Like if I'm someone like me who I think I love like most cars, I would say, Uh but that doesn't mean I should go out and buy a Saab 9000. Like, if you're going to buy mm-hmm. a Saab 9000, you got to be about that Saab life. You got to become about that Saab life. Yeah. 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 Because if you don't, you need a mechanic that's about yeah. it. Or I, you'll hate it. I feel like Subaru is almost in that category. They're like, either way, could go mm-hmm. either way. Yes, another yes example. and no. I mean, besides I, the engine being horizontal and making spark plugs mm-hmm. chain hard to work on, it's not Pretty much similar. different than a normal car. But I think anything old... You mm-hmm. gotta kind of become about that, like, 100%. right? Like, yeah. I think if you're dealing with inconvenience and like quirks, mm-hmm. 
then you have to develop a certain appreciation and love for it, mm-hmm. or else you're just going to throw it in the I trash. I think that's what it is. Is like you can't just fall in love with the sh- the shape of the car and the styling. It's like right. you got to fall in love with the philosophy that went into making right. it. Yes, or else, with, because it's with a company like Saab because yeah. they were not doing anything like anyone right. else yeah. until they yeah, got bought out. I think Saab's in there, Volvo, Volvo like yeah. Alfa Romeo probably, mm-hmm. something like that. Because, uh, yeah, they do it so differently that you have to learn about yeah. it yes. or you're just going to be frustrated. Yeah. So you yeah. have to learn about it and develop an appreciation for it or else you're just going to be pissed off at yeah. it. Yep. It's like mm-hmm. pastry chefing. Sure. It's a science. Baking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't yeah. just throw stuff in a just in a, in a uh, Dutch oven. Yeah, but you can have a new Lexus and not mm-hmm. be a Lexus man. Right. right. I don't think you can own an old Saab or an old Alfa Romeo or and something not be and not fan. be a fan no, of it because to. then you wouldn't have it. Yeah. Because yeah. there's so many negatives that come along with it. Yeah. That you have to be a fan in order totally. to keep it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like an ugly dog. <laughs> yeah, and I love ugly dogs. I love ugly dogs and lumps and all. Yep. You know, uh huh. Like you're, you're touching them, like yeah. yeah. You gotta scratch strategically. Yeah, my, I know all the lumps. My, my childhood dog, is, she's still yeah. around, and she's uh, she's getting lumpy. My dog is lumpy. Yeah. That's one of her nicknames. Lumpy. lumpy. Mm-hmm. Lumps. You got to know all the quirks. So yeah. it's like, oh, you gotta open the door handle like this. Or (laughs) you can't scratch, you got to scratch right here. Yeah. After some financial turmoil in the late 80s, General Motors acquired 50% of Saab in 1989, which helped get it back on its feet eventually. Mm -hmm. The early 90s were quite brutal for the Swedish brand, with declining sales, troubles in the world economy, and even a factory closure. Not to get too ahead of ourselves here, but the blending of Saab and GM DNA caused some growing pains. Not only in Saab's unwillingness to fully homologate its cars to other platforms in General Motors' portfolio, but also Saab fans weren't keen when they did integrate GM technology. So it became tougher and tougher to be the -the outside-the-box innovative brand that it had always been. Still, when the new 900 was unveiled in 1994, things were looking good for a little while at least. With 900,000 first-gen 900s built, the second-gen 900 was very well-received. Even though Saab was still reeling from its less-than-ideal situation with the Type 4 project, new platform sharing with GM meant that it shared the same underpinnings as the Opel and Vauxhall Vectra, and thankfully made for a lot less of a messy proposition. Mm, I I got a messy proposition Mm. for you. (laughs) Grape jelly fight. Oh, that would be messy. (laughs) Yeah. And so delicious. (laughs) Yeah. Fight each other with grape jelly. (laughs) Yeah, so Saab arguably needed that refresh, too, because the original 900 was based on the 99, which went on sale way back in 1968. So it needs some... I like the Saab 99. I think they're real good looking. I think they're real good looking. I think that's a good looking car. What's with Saab and nines? That's a great question. Is, Is nine a significant number in Swedish culture? So concerning the new 900, some hardcore Saab fans were dismayed at its styling and slight sellout status of the platform sharer, but it generally sold well until its end in 1998. This was the first Saab to ever have its engine mounted transversely, meaning it was flipped 90 degrees under the hood so its cylinders line up with the axles. This more normal engine placement meant normal transmission placement too. No more of that wacky front of the engine business. Yeah, we talked about that last time. The engine was like backwards in there. Oh. Yeah. Is that why it was front-wheel drive? Yeah. But it was still longitudinal, but backwards? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Available engines for the 900 included a naturally aspirated 2.3-liter inline-4, a turbocharged 2-liter, and a a 2.5-liter V6. However, as an article by the University of Cambridge perfectly described, the days of Saab and GM, quote, For many years, Saab was caught in a catch-22 situation. It was a niche auto producer that needed greater economies of scale to survive in an industry in which scale was increasingly important. Yet scale diluted the very individuality that was a hallmark of the Saab brand. Although Saab needed a parent company such as GM to achieve this, the reality of sharing platforms and components with other GM models diluted the appeal of the Saab brand. It just... Part of what made it cool was yeah. that it was a niche. It was, and once it wasn't it was niche, so it wasn't backed up cool. in the niche, it couldn't even yeah. handle itself anymore. Mm-mm-mm. And the people who liked Sobs liked it. They were unique and kind of weird. And then once everyone started liking them, then they were like, I actually don't like these anymore. Yeah. 
Platform sharing is good for scale, but like it also Justin. Meant- Justin would be like if there are a million SVXs just driving around. He'd be oh, like, yeah. hey, you know what? Uh, well, Bucky Lassick yeah, is Bucky uh, Lassick. Yeah. in my style here. <laughs> Bucky Lassick and Doug DeMiro ruined Justin's Life. swag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ruined his yeah. entire life. He's been building on this. Finally, he gets a shot to be a YouTuber, and he's going to bring it to the world. He's <laughs> priming it, and then all of a sudden, Bucky Lassick. <laughs> so, platform sharing, good for scale, but also meant that all the quirkiness and individuality that became so important to Sob's identity gradually started to fade away. Mm. And not only that, but any instance where Saab didn't find GM technology to be good enough, whether it be early navigation, infotainment, or safety engineering, became a major drain on development funding, which doesn't help with producing cars in a timely enough fashion to be profitable. They would make their own shit. <laughs> yeah, so they got bought, and then they still made their yeah, own shit. Which kind of defeats the whole purpose. GM stuff sucked. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, ah, oh, there's like, don't blame them. Yeah. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> We could call this straight-up stubbornness, but it was the good kind. Saab had high standards and stuck to its guns, even if it meant taking a financial hit for it. It's airplane guns. (laughs) Hey, cannons. Cannon. That level of commitment is rare, but it usually means that a legend will be born like the Tesla Model S or the Lexus LFA, two of James's favorite cars. Yeah, two of the best cars ever made. That took much longer than usual to develop, but ended up making quite an impact on their respective markets. How did the LFA make an impact? You know, it sounded good, but it didn't make an impact on a market at all. It was a huge failure because it was years behind. Yeah, but it sounded good. It sounded good, but I wouldn't say that it made a huge impact on the market, and I wouldn't say that it was worth the wait because the fact that they waited so long was the reason that it was a huge flop for Toyota. And guess what? All of those cars that are selling for a million dollars, all those million dollar LFAs, you know how much money Toyota gets out of that? Zero mm-hmm. bucks. So it's a huge failure for Toyota still, and m- maybe a success for like eight rich guys. So mm-hmm. we need more of that. But it sounded good. It sounds good. It sounds good. Lots of cars sound good. It sounds good. But it sounded good. It sounded good. Slow. But it sounded good. Okay, fine. (laughs) What are you, the comment section? (laughs) Yes. (sighs) I agree, though. It was a huge flop and let down. Yeah. Yeah. Huge thanks to Prize Picks for sponsoring this episode of Pass Gas. As you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Your boy loves to bet on sports here and there. I am pretty good at picking stuff, but prize picks makes it super easy to pick likely winners. They give you all the odds and stuff. This week, I'm betting that Giannis is going to score more than 25 points because he's my boy. I'm a big Bucks fan. So download the app today and use code GAS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's right. All you have to do, download the app, use code GAS for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Big thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode of Pass Gas. Selling a little or a lot. Shopify helps you do your thing, however you're cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your little online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way up to, did we just hit half a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. What I love about Shopify is that it gives you control over how you grow your business. This is the kind of tool that I'm looking for if I'm going to start a business. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash gas, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash gas now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash gas. Thanks, Shopify. 
However, Saab's quirkiness revealed itself in other ways after GM became more involved. During this era, one relationship many never thought could materialize did. Saab and NASCAR. What? In order to promote the 900's liability, in 1996, it brought six 900's with different engines to Dallatega Speedway and drove them for eight days straight. Whoa. Driven by various auto journalists and personalities like us. <laughs> we are the personalities. No one's asked us to drive eight days in a circle. Yeah. What's, what I'm fine with that. Guys? We don't need to be <laughs> asked. Come on. I'm okay. <laughs> Somebody needs to invite Nolan to drive for eight days I, in a circle. To prove the reliability of a car. To. Let's go to Alabama and drive for eight days straight. Yeah, it's even, <laughs> even more muggy. Yeah. One made it the entire time by covering 25,000 miles. And even with pit stops, maintained an average speed of 140 miles per hour. That seems terrifying. That is pretty crazy. <laughs> a front-wheel drive car on a banked oval. Sounds fun. That's hey, insane. I'm rethinking the invite. <laughs> invite Nolan. Yeah, let me know. The event earned its several world records, including the one-hour, 24-hour, and 25,000-mile production car average speed. Didn't Subaru beat that later? Probably. Yeah. Did they? Uh, the The RA is a record attempt. Mm, that's um, cool. So they drove it for 24 hours to prove its reliability or something. Mm. Look where that got them. In the pits. Despite the bizarre situation of watching a Saab rip along an oval circuit while overhearing both Swedish and Southern accents in the pit areas. <laughs> no, that would be weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The car proved to be competent at the task. Motor Trend was there huh? and spoke highly of it. Okay, let's hear it. The Saab 900 used most of their suspension travel to handle the bumps caused by the tunnel under the trek. The downward G-forces are pretty incredible, reported to be as high as 1.5 Gs in the banking. As the driving experience becomes more familiar, you really begin to appreciate how well the Saabs are suited for this record attempt. They're extremely easy to drive at high speeds. <laughs> <laughs> Upon leaving the pits, you just flick through the gears, and within a half lap, you're at 5,600 RPM in high gear. About 150 miles per hour. Wow, thank you so much for that in-depth <laughs> Coverage. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe you found that audio. <laughs> Saab even experienced an impromptu unplanned safety test. Uh oh. A strong gust of wind during a thunderstorm caused one of there. You had to do some of this in the rain. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no. What tires were they running? <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Caused one of the 900s to smack head first into the track's wall at Ooh. over 80 miles per hour. That Ooh. hurts. Dang. Driven by Saab employee Herman Rudstrom. Both front airbags deployed, and the car was thoroughly written off. Remarkably, slash thankfully, Rundstrom walked away from it. And now he talks about it at every Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then I was in Alabama, and it started to rain. <laughs> okay, Dad, let's go to bed. <laughs> and the rain, I went and I walked away. <laughs> Saab celebrated its record-setting achievements by offering a special Talladega edition of the coupe, convertible, and five-door model in 1997. Each had 16-inch, seven-spoke alloy wheels. I bet that sold great. Color match. <laughs> yeah, the Saab Talladega. Yeah, like what? <laughs> who was the target For the architect for yeah. who loves Ricky Bobby. Only employees bought it. It's pretty cool looking. Those wheels are not... Does bespoke for that. Those are cool. They're called Bugattis. Like those wheels are on like a ton of different. Well, really? Car. Yeah, Volkswagen had them. They're like a seven spoke design. Mm -hmm. Very cool. You can buy them 5Y120. Mm -hmm. They're made by Bugatti. Get out of here. Yep. The same people. You're bullshitting who, me. I swear to Lord. You are yanking my chain. I swear to Lord. You're cranking my hog. Hand to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cranking your hog. <laughs> But that's not as quirky as it got. It would get quirkier oh, once two new models were unveiled a few years later. Let's go, dude. What? Even more quirky than that, James? Dude, more quirky than a Saab Talladega. Talladega right. Saab. Here we go. Talladega I don't know if I can Saab. handle this. Let well, you know I'm going to find out they're in NASCAR. The shake and bake oh, Saab. Man. They won one race, maybe. I don't I don't know about that. No, I doubt uh, it. <laughs> they were in a rally cross one year. 
Oh, that's cool. That's kind of neat. Uh, okay. Sam Hubinat just showed up, was racing against like all these Subarus, and, and he just shows up in this like 10 year old Saab. Okay. Uh, no, no, he he was in an actual Saab, not the 92X. Really? Keeping up with all these modern cars and this old, that's cool, big right. orange rally car. That's great. The 900 became the 9.3 in 1998, but besides the name change, nobody really noticed. <laughs> At least on the outside, as Saab boasted that over 1,100 changes were made, but it generally felt like more of a refresh than a brand new generation. However, once GM gained full control of Saab... Like Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, however, once GM gained full control of Saab in 2000, the first signal of the brand being fully absorbed was the new 9.3 in 2003. Guys. Brand number 28 of GM. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Based, say that again. Yep. <laughs> Based on the GM Epsilon 1 platform, the new 9.3 still had a lot of Saabness about it with a modest 210 horsepower out of its now- General Motors Ecotech Turbo Inline Four Engine, baby. Hey. I, remember, I remember seeing one of these in the mall. Yeah, in the mall where they're trying to show it off. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. what'd you think? I thought it was pretty good looking. All right, the Ecotech is dope. You though. still see these things on the road a lot, yeah. probably because they're GM powered. Yeah. It's the Ecotech. Yeah. yeah, Justin loves the Ecotech. He wants one for his impulse. I want to put one in my impulse. That'd be very interesting. They, if you get the turbo ones, they're already fully built. They can hold five hundred horsepower. Dang, one horsepower and a little impulse like that. It's scary. Dude, no, thank you. <laughs> I like 300. Horsepower. Get it? Uh, that's the goal. 300, 350. Ah. You know. This thing had a manual transmission and a spacious, nicely appointed interior and mm. overall great looks. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a handsome I car. It's good looking. It's a handsome yeah. car. It's good. Sadly, though, the driving experience. I saw one in the mall. <laughs> Sadly. So they don't just put yeah. any car. No, in they the really mall. don't. They what put, color was it? It's silver, like the picture. Uh, they put the yeah. Saab 93 in the mall. Yep. They put a Shelby Cobra that you can enter to win in the mall. They do. Yep. It never leaves the mall, though. I know. I, I saw an Aston Martin covered in Year of the Dragon wrap in the mall. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. I love the mall. I love the cars in the mall. What's your favorite Any mall? Any more questions? Where's your, where do you go to? What mall you go this to? This was in Southgate Plaza. Oh. South Coast Plaza. Southgate Plaza. Okay. South Coast Plaza. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. That's where me and all the Chinese billionaires hang out. <laughs> That's where uh, VinFast hangs out. That's where VinFast oh. hangs out. VinFast also has a store at the Century City Mall. I went to the They also one have too. one. Yeah. They have a store at the Third Street Promenade, VinFast. Wow, VinFast. And I went Buying to up all the LA real estate. I went to Third Street like mm-hmm. a few days after our first VinFast review came out. Yeah. And I saw the store and I was like, <laughs> I had to go to a restaurant next to it and I was like, I don't want to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to Hey, uh, one second, yeah. please. The, sure. the week that episode aired, there was a there were VinFast just like driving through my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, why are They're there so many for VinFast? There is. I wasn't even in that episode. <laughs> Turns out there was an EV driving experience oh, okay. down the road. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> just walking Edgar like yeah. Oh shit! That's the same car. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, so yeah, sadly, the driving experience of the 93 uh, it didn't really do its predecessors proud. Okay, as Car and Driver put it in 2004, quote: "The car's handling, composed and restful on the highway, became hard to coordinate in the mountains. The front tires are doing too much of the work, and the business of trading braking grip for turning or power while trying to keep the other cars in sight." became quite taxing. Yeah. The process led to a rather ragged driving style. That's not what you want. No. no. Taxing? Nah. Not taxing. The exact want, opposite of what you want. I want calming mm-hmm. and smooth, not taxing I mean, and ragged. Most of the cars we build here are pretty taxing. To All of our cars yeah. are bad. <laughs> <laughs> a few years later, GM went ham with the Saab brand, okay? There were two distinct models that weren't very Saab at all, but the badge's blessing... On their hoods made them great cars regardless. The, the Saab first... Coupe de Ville. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to find. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to get Saab, to it, uh, The Saab 150. We're going to get to it. Saab S150. The 2005 Saab 92X Aero hey. represented a massive shift from what originally made Saab a Saab. It was textbook and blatant badge engineering. And even if it was still a cool car... It was a significant marker in the brand's impending downfall in 2011. Absolutely. To enthusiasts, the car is essentially a Subaru Impreza WRX. 
wagon. It's sick. It is actually sick. Yeah. At the time, GM had a 20% share of Subaru. So why not capitalize on the premium compact market? This was before BMW brought over the 1 Series or the Audi A3, and Volvo was already seeing success with its S40 sedan and V50 wagon. Despite that competition, this is by far one of the best examples of badge engineering. You know what? I'll co-sign that. Yeah, for sure. I think it's Absolutely. a great car. It's just a it's, little uh, better looking. It's like, oh, I like Subarus, but I just got my corporate job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't show up with a bug eye <laughs> hatch. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be this. So it, it grows up a little bit. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you still get the same fun. He still get the same fun. The but same they fun. had the aero and the non-aero, so you got a non-turbo and a turbo. Oh, no kidding. So, okay. So you know the difference with the hood scoops. I did not know that. Aero means aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> the 92X was essentially a WRX with a better looking exterior trim, uh, a nicer interior, and added overall refinement. It unsubarued the Subaru part of the car, which is no easy task. With revised engine mounts, some altered engine tuning, thicker sound deadening, and better suspension tuning, no. it polished up the rackety sewing machine under the hood. Oh, come on. Cut down on the, oh, tin, come on. On the tin can feel oh. that Subies often possess. Go dare you! And made the car's overall driving experience much more pleasant. It was very, I've driven I, both extensively. Yeah, I don't think it's there's not that, that much. No, it's, there's no way. Yeah. In uh, fact, a former employee of Donut, mm-hmm. Jesse, had a Saab 9 2 Two of them. Two of them. And he took the seats from our old Subaru mm-hmm. and put them in his car because the they were nicer. Yeah, the, the leather seats. Limited Leatherette. Ones. Yeah, leatherettes. <laughs> but, Made from a plastic cow. <laughs> <laughs> but unlike the less than ideal driving experience of the 9.3, this wagon, guys, it was rousing to drive. Rousing. As Car and Driver put it in 2004, quote, This car makes me rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> they liked it. They liked it. Yeah. I'm not going to read the whole quote. It's, it's funny, you know, because they liked Steering the Subaru. Superb. I doubt they reviewed the Subaru like that. Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably not. Steering is superb, offering crisp turn in and firm on center feel. A quick response that isn't too quick. Oh, what I like a quick about a quick response is that it's not too quick. Yeah, it's not mm, too quick. Yeah. The overall feel is light yet amply communicative. <laughs> this is like all contradictions. Rarely requiring adjustments to the wheel after taking a set. I feel like sometimes. That's what car, driving all wheel drive is like. Yeah. I also feel like sometimes car journalists mm-hmm. are like. I better let everyone know that I know how to drive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I better let everyone <laughs> that reads this know that I know how to drive. Mm-hmm. So, like, they describe driving mm-hmm. so freaking much. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I'm allowed to say that because I'm better than a car. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first sob ever to get all wheel drive. Which is kind of crazy, Which is actually. weird, because they were all rally snow cars. And that made is in Sweden. weird. Huh. That in is Sweden. interesting. Very interesting. Huh. Yeah. Who knew? However, huh. there was one huge issue to reckon with with the 92X Aero. It was far, far more expensive than the WRX, WRX excuse me, mm. which made it awfully hard to justify, both between GM Link DNA and the competition. Yeah, it was uh, interesting. Jim from the office had Jim a 92X. Right. Jim from the office. Yeah. 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 Everyone's favorite cool guy, apparently. <laughs> Jim from The Office, 92X. Mm-hmm. And then Steve Carell from The Office had a PT Cruiser. A PT Cruiser and a Chrysler Sebring. The Sebring think, convertible, yeah. which we've had we've all had those both. cars. Yeah. Oh, we've seen, had both. We've them. had all oh. three. Wow. Oh. <laughs> we've had all the office cars except for... We need Dwight's uh, Firebird. Firebird. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Sick. Cool. we got to get Dwight's Firebird. All right. Let's do it. Put we drove the all list. the office cars. We yeah. drove all the cars from the office. It might do well. It might do That's pretty well. not a terrible Dude, idea. for a road trip video? Yeah, yeah it'd be we great. We all the cars from the office. That's pretty funny. Have, have Jeremiah and the Camaro. I bet there's a... And then we can make <laughs> huh. a series of it. We drive all the cars from It's Always Sunny. Yeah, yeah. Don't steal this. This is a record. If you steal it... They're going to know. Well, uh, trademark. What's the date? What's the date? Today we'll is tra- March 11th. It's 2.10 p.m. We'll strike you. We'll strike yeah. you. It's a good idea. We'll strike you. We know people That's at YouTube. That's a pretty good idea. Okay. So. We drove all the cars from the office a road trip. The Seinfeld one would be tough. Seinfeld. I Dibs on 9-11. <laughs> 
dibs on 9-11? They were, uh... <laughs> <laughs> said Osama bin Laden. My, uh, <laughs> weirdly enough, my Subaru showed up in Seinfeld. That's how really? ingrained wow, cars were in Seinfeld. Whoa. Follow the money. Whoa. Really weird. Uh, John Voigt, uh, the LeBaron convertible. Oh, yeah. Sobs. Yeah. 9-11. Uh, Kramer's car. Yeah, he had a big old, like, He had a Cadillac car. at one point. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Elaine, she has a car. No. Yeah. So Elaine has a car. Doesn't she? Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought one they would the... not give Elaine a car. How does she, How does she get her? It's New York City, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, have, yeah, uh, they yeah. got cars in the Shocked ground. Shocked they even there. had yeah. cars in the yeah. show. What does Jerry's parents drive? Jerry's parents drive? <laughs> a Cadillac. 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 I want that one. Jerry Stiller's the goat. All right. Uh, okay, so. Now, Justin, it's your favorite part of the episode here. The 2005 to 2009 Saab 97X was a Chevy Trailblazer underneath with the same V6 and V8 engines available. Mm -hmm. It was generally received in the same I way would, that the 92X was, okay? What? I would rock one of these. Yeah. They're great. Really cool. It, uh, this thing had better overall luxury and refinement than the Trailblazer. Mm -hmm. It also had better looks. They came in two colors. Yeah. Silver and black. But there's an even better black. one. The 97X Arrow was essentially the new money coked out version of mm -hmm. this car. Okay? It was a yeah. rebadged Trailblazer SS. Is this what your brother has? That's what he has. Okay. Featuring Sick. a six liter LS2 with 390 horsepower, 395 pounds feet, and zero to 60 took five and a half seconds. Dude, that's sick. Dude, this thing rules. The amount of people, because his chops, like it, yeah. it is modified I love that. heavily. Um, he took it to a car meet, and everyone's like, dude, you swapped the Saab? He's just like, no. <laughs> like, just, stupid, look at the internet. <laughs> look at the internet, stupid. <laughs> stupid, look at the Whoa. freaking internet. So These things are cool. Dude, that's awesome. I want to put a big old Whipple supercharger on it. Mm -hmm. They're all-wheel drive as well. Yeah, you can get them cool. rear-wheel drive as well. Dang. You um, can get them rear-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. and, a um, tub it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, they also sick. come with a rear air ride. For like for really towing good? stuff, yeah, that's cool. It's good air ride. Uh, it's adjustable so that you can make the ride less harsh and stuff. Dude, this thing rolls. Yeah, it looks good too. Yep. It does look good. Uh, this was not only the largest Saab ever built, but also the fastest. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, so super loud. <laughs> Thanks, GM. It's he got no <laughs> <laughs> so the nine seven was already struggling in sales. This thing wasn't really for the dedicated Saab connoisseur who needed understated. It's smartly styled and safe transport because it's a big old honker. Yeah, it's a big old honker. So for sure. Apparently, the 97X in general wasn't smartly styled or understated either. In seven months, in the seven months following its introduction, Porsche sold more 911s than this thing. So between this car and the struggling 92X, things were looking quite bleak for Saab in the mid 2000s. But their cars were sick. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. honestly. They hmm. made two of the coolest cars and failed miserably. And then failed miserably. I like I like the uh, nine seven a arrow, uh -huh. but I think I like the way the Trailblazer SS looks more. Than yeah, this. I mean, at this point, I think I'd rather have a Trailblazer yeah. SS. That's I think the maybe trick. We yep. just like, but those are harder to get. But if you're only looking at Sobs, you're like, yeah, the Sob is. Sick. It's funny. That but here's the thing: exists. the Sob is at least four grand cheaper. Yeah, that's really? the thing. The trailblazer. They're going to put a tax on that. Mm -hmm. The Trailblazer tax. The SS tax. You mm -hmm. know they're mm -hmm. going to... Yeah. The Trailblazer's way better. And looking. the cops are not looking at a sob. Yeah, exactly. I mean... I'm almost 40 years old. The cops ain't looking at me. Now the <laughs> IRS is. <laughs> <laughs> the money cops. Yeah. <laughs> the post office is coming for <laughs> The post, post office, office is coming for my mail. <laughs> my correspondence is in jeopardy. Your stamp was slightly crooked. <laughs> All right, here's the thing about the late 2000s. It was so much cooler back then than it is now. I don't know. They really stacked the deck against Saab and its parent company, GM. The late 2000s is they. Yeah. yeah interesting. <laughs> I'm just clarifying for the yeah. listener. All right, maybe it's just the, the Illuminati. The Illuminati did All right, not back like in the late the 2000s, police. the Illuminati really stacked the deck <laughs> against Saab and its okay, parent company, okay, GM. Okay, I'm listening. Okay. Saab was in a tailspin once the 2010s rolled around. <laughs> Jets. Uh, 2010s aren't good. Uh, how about the yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the strokes? That was 2010s? No, that was early 2000s, yeah, I guess. That's what I'm thinking, man. 2010s was done. I 2010, dude, I just remember 2012 to like 2015 being, music-wise at least, 
one of my least favorite couple years what happened for popular music. I don't know, dude. I just remember being in my dorm room and thinking, this is what... And then when Isn't Traps when, like, started... No, it's when, like, uh, Look, we had Tyler some, the Creator some, came out. Some, yeah, there was Tyler, but also there was, like, Imagine Dragons. Oh, yeah, yeah Imagine Dragons yeah. sucks. Radio, now there's radioactive stuff was too. Like, all, I mean, there's always been all shitty stuff. All that was on while I was uh, overseas. Have you heard the new Schoolboy Q? Yes. It's very good. I like it. All right. I'm glad he's back. Yeah, me too. Welcome back, Q. Thank, welcome back, Q. He's my style icon. <laughs> <laughs> it was producing seemingly good cars... Okay, Saab was around this time, but between losing a lot of its traditional Saab customer appeal, creating expensive, extra blatant badge engineering that made its models a very tough sell against their platform siblings, and the world economy taking a nosedive into the Great Recession, it was proving difficult to level off. Yeah, that's not good. People didn't have the money to spend on a muscle truck in an architect costume. <laughs> And, yeah. and GM didn't have the funds to make them either. Well, GM didn't have the money to make a lot of cars, which is why Saturn and Oldsmobile uh, got executed. Pontiac, oh, wow. Saturn, Pontiac, Saturn, Saturn Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile, Hummer. Aurora, what was Hummer. Yeah. The new Dine 5 debuted in 2011 and was once again based on a GM platform. It was overall well-received thanks to its looks, excellent handling, and punchy enough turbocharged V6 at its helm. But too little, too late. GM sold the Saab brand to Dutch sports car manufacturer Spiker huh. shortly thereafter, and the path was nothing but rocky from there. Can you guys be in Saab and be like, we got bought by Spiker? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the people they that made that one, one car? A one Missy car Elliot that drove? Elliot yeah. And that was it? Yeah. It was in one video game? Spiker. <laughs> Spiker built the 9.5 utilizing GM parts and seemed to be off to a decent start, though only a year passed before the company declared bankruptcy oh, no. and faded away. Guys, we have totally misjudged this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me of Sears and Kmart. It's yeah. like, how did Sears buy Kmart? They yeah. barely exist. <laughs> yeah. And then they both died. And they yeah. both died. Oh, no. Well, at least Sears was Nuts. big at one point. Yeah, at one point, like, when they were selling houses yeah. out of a freaking catalog. So used to have houses sick. and cars. Spikers, just like... Spiker. What? <laughs> oh, a car. Yeah, right? Saab should have bought Spiker. Dude, something lasting a year in business before failing is like... But bad. Spiker's pretty back bad. now, right? Spiker's back, baby. Better than so. ever. <laughs> I don't They're know. making EVs, I think. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Uh, don't quote me. <laughs> Next stop, the Saab brand was bought by Nevs. Or Why? National Electric Vehicle Sweden, a group of Ooh, Chinese yeah. investors who okay. wanted the Saab nameplate for a future 9.3 electric vehicle. Gotcha. There was some buzz about his comeback in 2017, but those plans are still, seven years later, unrealized. Have you been on their website lately? No. It says, sorry. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> uh, we're not going to launch this anytime sorry. soon. It's being sorry. pocketed. Peace. Thanks for the money. Mm hmm Though there was also a tiny bit of buzz just two years later uh, where none other than Swedish supercar manufacturer Koenigsegg expressed having oh. a hand in it. Finally, some recent news from December 2023 is that one of Neb's designs was bought by a Canadian company by the name of EB Electra. It's called the Emily GT, <laughs> and it certainly looks like it could have some sobness. Could you imagine? I drive an Emily. Kind of car out an Emily. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> Emily. I like that. It's as like a, Julia. A, yeah, a Julia and Emily, a Rachel, a Rachel, uh, <laughs> a think, Debbie. I, think all of those <laughs> I got are... that new Debbie GT. <laughs> um, this thing kind of looks like a Saab, I guess. Uh -huh. Looks like a Lucid. It looks. It just looks like a car. Now it's sad that Saab went the way that it did. Quirky cars that flip the script in one way or another are integral to moving competition forward. Mm -hmm, but Saab mm -hmm. didn't just do this with one car in its lineup. It did it with everything it produced from beginning to end. Whether it was striking styling defined for optimal aerodynamics, way ahead of its time safety ratings, front wheel drive, or smart and spacious interior design, Saab offered it all and gave its European competition a very strong run for its money. Yeah, that's a tough run, man. Yeah. You know, you go strong for like 30, 40 years, uh -huh. and then all it takes is one decade for everything to fall apart. That's pretty sad. All it takes to get purchased by a GM. <laughs> Life, bro. 
Yeah. That's life. That's life. And then GM writes you off. So Spikers off. is around, or they do have a website. I don't know if it's the same people involved. They have their new car is called the Spiker C8, which is what their old one was called. This one's called the C8 Preliator. Preliator. Which is Latin for fighter or warrior. Whoa. Yeah. So that's great. That sounds like they were like, oh, you know what we should call it? Like warrior. Look up what Latin is for warrior. <laughs> we Googled they it. Were like, they were like, it's Preliator. They're like, oh, Yeah, that's dang. not really a, we couldn't <laughs> find a better <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really like that name. All anyway, right. could have been like have, Phalanx or we something. We have some. I like Sobs. I think they're cool and quirky and weird. I'd love to have a Sob 99 one day. Uh, really cool wheel designs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is one thing they've always done really well. Mm -hmm. All right, we have some listener mail. Hey there. I recently went through a really tough breakup with the guy that I thought I would marry. Uh oh. This is one of our exes. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> his name was Nolan no. Sykes. Can you cut his dong off? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I recently went through a really tough breakup with the guy I thought I would marry. I've been heartbroken and crying for weeks. When we started dating a few years ago, I was listening to Pascal's nonstop, but slowly stopped listening while we were dating. I played a few episodes for him, and he wasn't really into it. Well, I honestly focused on so many other things. I stopped doing and listening to things that really interested me. Hmm. I turned on an episode today, number 205, for the first time in a long time, and it's honestly so good to be back. Welcome back. I laughed so hard while listening at work that my coworkers were giving me looks. You he wasn't a job. worth it. Mm -hmm. So They're not worth it. I don't know if you ever thought your podcast would help someone great get through a breakup, but it is. Thanks for making me laugh. Kirsten. Well, well, you know what, Kirsten? That's why we started this podcast. Yes. To help people get through breakups. You know, mm -hmm. um, the fact that it's not like, let's see. With Stop zero focused, relationship advice. I honestly focused on so many other things. Stopped doing and listening to things that interested me. Yeah. That's, I mean. Number one key right key there. That's key thing right there. Can't yeah, lose yourself in a relationship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I'm really sorry that happened. But it sounds like th it'll be my things will be better. Hey, you are way better, be better off. Hey, if you're dating a guy who didn't like listen to a bunch of idiots talk about cars, yeah. then you're better off without him. Yeah, exactly. He probably drove a sob. Yeah, he probably, <laughs> honestly, he's probably, probably just mad. GM shut. Listen, sob he down, probably you know? deserves to die in a swamp. No, okay, okay, but uh, I hope you're. I it sounds like I'm not be better. saying kill him, but if he deserves, if he dies in a swamp, so be it. It sounds like you're doing better, and that's that's really great, Kirsten. So thank you so much for your email. Uh, hang in there. It'll be better. Um, thank you so much for and sending your email. And thank you, Justin, for being here. Hey. Filling in for Joe, who's joined the French Legion. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> He's out there fighting in his little white cap. Um, <laughs> my... <laughs> If you'd like to follow Justin, follow him on all social media at Justin Freeman. Follow James at James Pumphrey and follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Big thank you to our producers, our production staff, I should say now. Yeah, we you hear him laughing over staff yeah, now. We got Kristen Felsky, Audrey Holden, Gavin Kinzel. Nick is hanging around here somewhere. Nick Giamuso, he's waving there his he hand is. from behind the flat over there. Waving his Big hand from you. behind and the flat. Our writer this week, Peter Nelson. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. We will see you next time on Pascal's. <laughs>